Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Um, God bless you all. We are glad to have another opportunity to share with you all tonight. Uh, I am Pastor Clinton Wilkins. This is my co-host, Pastor Tanya Clark. I apologize for the noise in the background. I forgot to bring my conference call in. Praise God. But <laughs> you should be you should be coming in now. Praise the Lord. So everybody should be uh, should be online. Praise God. We are here tonight for another conversation. Uh, tonight, our topic is we're talking about keys to the kingdom. Uh, we're discussing uh, aligning our uh, our faith with our prayer. Amen. And, mm -hmm. amen. and so um, uh, glad to glad to have you with us tonight. Uh, conference call, folks, your lines are not muted tonight. So I'm going to ask you all to mute yourselves uh, unless you are um, uh, unless you are, are wanting to share with us online. So conference call, folks, please uh, remember you are not muted tonight. Praise God. Um, but we are, uh, again, glad to have an opportunity to share tonight. Uh, good evening to my Aunt Rosa. God bless you. Uh, I share with you tonight. Uh, I'm going to begin by sharing with you from Second uh, Chronicles uh, seven fourteen, and and Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, "If my people," and this is this is off the cuff, so I'm just going to loosely translate it. But it says, "If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then uh, I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land." And so tonight, as we talk about um, as we talk about tonight, uh, uh, just just sharing in prayer or prayer aligning our prayer uh, and our faith, and we talk about key, keys to the kingdom. Uh, I begin our conversation with with just sharing uh, that our prayer life is such an important, such a valuable and important part of all that we do, and it is extremely important that we make sure that when we pray, uh, that we're not just, uh, as the Bible would say, we're not just repeating vain repetition, but that we understand what prayer really is. And, uh, and and I'm, I'm not going to go too far into that because my co-host, I already know, has a, a great point on this. But but I do want to say that we have to understand um, that we're not just randomly sharing or randomly repeating words to God. But but we actually have God's ear and we're literally um, we are, are literally uh, having a conversation with God. And the thing about conversation with God, we have to remember is that we want to talk. Yes. But at the same time, we want to listen as well. It's a conversation and not a monologue. And so uh, we're talking about the keys of the kingdom and aligning our faith with our prayer, our prayer with our faith. Uh, we, we want to just uh, we want to make sure that that we as people of God understand the importance of, of having that faith, of believing in God. Uh, but we also want to understand the importance uh, of being able to hold that conversation with God that allows us uh, to come into alignment with him. Tanya, go ahead. OK, so I want to start back with the scripture that you that you read initially it says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. And one of the things I think that we definitely we need to kind of take that scripture and dissect it down. First off, when we're talking to God, you know, we're called his people. So therefore, we have his nature, his likeness, um, and we're going after his will because we are his people. So we want to do what pleases him, what gives him glory, what acknowledges him and puts him first. And we're called by his name. So now we're not on, we're representing him. We're representing Christ. We're representing him in the earth. Um, and then he said, humble yourself. So that means now we have to submit our will submit our way, submit our thoughts, uh, submit our lifestyle, submit our appetites. There are things that God requires of us to do. You know, if, okay, submit. Okay, so now, and he said, then will I hear from heaven? Okay, so then he'll hear our prayers. He'll forgive our sins and he'll heal the land. Okay, so sometimes I think when we see, when we hear that part of the scripture, we forget that we are his land because he dwells on the inside of us. We are the land, not just our, our the land or the nation, but we are his land as well. So he'll heal the land. So God wants us to come into alignment with him. And prayer is one of those things that puts you in right alignment. It's a foundational principle, uh, along with fasting, praying, um, rejoicing or, or, or praising God. Um, 
come and reading your scripture study. These are foundational truths that we have to begin to implement as the body of Christ. And when we do that, we see transformation. A lot of times I think people, when they pray, they pray prayers expecting God to do what they want him to do for them. Not understanding that one of the best ways uh, to get what you desire and what you want is to pray the word of God. Because we're not here to manipulate God into doing what we want him to do, but we want God to do what he already said he was going to do. So when you pray God's word, you see God's results. Um, one of the, I was uh, mentioning a quote that I found by uh, Leonard Ravenhill, and I pray I pronounced his name correctly. And it basically says, prayer is not an argument with God to persuade him to move things our way, but an exercise by which we are enabled by his spirit to move ourselves his way. So prayer is to move us in his way and in his direction, because as we do that, we're going to see greater things manifest in our lives. I know a lot of times we pray stuff and we pray it based off of our circumstances. And, and another thing that as I was studying this, prayer cannot be a choice of last resort. Prayer should be the first thing that you do um, because your father cares for you and he desires you to have, it's his good pleasure to bless you. And so if you treat prayer as something that is necessary, a, a part of your DNA, a part of who you are, then you'll begin to see transformation. But you can't pray what you don't know. So you then have to go back and study the word of God, know his word in order to pray it and, and see God move in that way. Amen. Amen. And a couple of things came to mind as you were speaking just then. Um, one of those things is, you know, I, I've often uh, in, in uh, during messages, I've often talked about um, the, the gospel song that says you tried everything else you need to try mm -hmm. God. And I'm not I'm not hating on the songwriter or anything of that nature. But honestly speaking, I, I often wonder why it is that it has to be that way. Why do we have to try everything else? Why do we have to get to the point uh, where, where all hell is broken loose in our lives and we can't do anything else before we turn to God? And as you say, um, you know, why do we make God a last resort? Why don't we go to him first? You know, the Bible says, seek first Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness mm -hmm. and all of the things he'll add unto you. So if we already know through scripture, and I understand that some some folks don't have that relationship that allows them to act on that. But if we already know through scripture that if we seek God and we seek his righteousness, um, then he'll take care of everything else. Then why is it that we make him a last resort? And then the other thing that I thought about as, as you were sharing is the scripture that says, delight yourself in the Lord and yes. he'll give you the desires of your heart. And, and what we oftentimes do is uh, we have, as you said, uh, we have that mindset that if we you know, if, if we're praying and we're going to church and, you know, we're we're doing these things, you know, we, we're wearing a cross and we're carrying a Bible and we don't we're not cussing and we're not drinking and we're not smoking and we're not partying. We're not doing those things. Then we can, uh, you know, using your terminology, we can manipulate God into doing what it is that we want to do. But that's a misinterpretation of the scripture, mm -hmm. because what the scripture actually means is as you delight yourself in the Lord, the Lord will begin to line your heart up and yes. he will begin to line your mindset up with his so that as you delight yourself in him the desires of your heart become the desires that he has for us yes. not the desires that we have according to our worldly view of how things should be and so we have to be prepared and that's one of the things i think that sometimes uh people who begin to come to christ miss we have to get to a point where we understand that when we come to christ we've got to be willing uh to allow him uh to move in our lives a lot of people you know, and, and I know I use this phrasing a lot of uh, a lot of people want that Burger King. Uh, they, they want that Burger King Christianity. They want to have it. You know, you want to have it your way, but it does not work that way. And so we serve a sovereign God and he's he's bigger than everything, you know, that that uh, that we can can deal with and every, uh, everything that we can ask or think he's you know, he, he can do exceeding abundantly above all of that. And so because uh, because that is his that is his uh, his mentality, that is his uh, that is her, his persona. We have to allow ourselves to line up with him, but we fight that and we want to have it our way. Amen. Amen. Uh, Philippians 2 and 13 says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And I think that we we 
We've told people, you know, if you come to God, you know, you don't have to change. I think that's a lie and a misnomer. God's going to change you. <laughs> and if you don't change, there's a problem. Um, if you stay the same, you know, when people say, oh, this is just how I am. No, it's not. You Then you've not allowed the Lord to change you because you're supposed to be changed into his image and into his likeness. Um, and the only way you can do that is through and by the word of God, where he begins to work on the way that you look at life, the way that you see yourself, because prayerfully you'll begin to see yourself the way that he sees you and not the way that even the world has taught you to see yourself. And, and when you see yourself that way, then your mentality changes. And then the way that you speak changes, the way that you act changes. Everything about you will begin to change because you're transforming, goes back to that, transforming into his image and into his likeness. He wants you to please him. Think about it. When, when Jesus Christ talked about God, he said, I only do what the father tells me to do. I only do what he shows me. I only do. So everything that he did was to please God. That was his motivation to fulfill the will of the one that sent him. That was his motivation. And we say we want to be like Christ. So we have to be willing to please the one that sent him. And that's God. So you got to be willing to change. And it means that you're going to have to be willing to let go of some old ideologies, some old myths, some things got, that you've held on to. And that goes back to that instantaneous thing. I think we, we've lied to people and we've not told them the truth. And God's going to change you. Yeah, we got to catch the fish, true enough. But trust and know, once that fish is caught, in order for you to eat it, it's got to be gutted. <laughs> it's got to be cleaned out. And that's what God's going to do. He's going to go in and he's going to gut your life. And he's going to begin to change it. Not to destroy you, but to make you better. And to make you stronger. And to make you successful. Because that's what his purpose is. He, he never, he said, my, my will is that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So God wants that for us, but it's only when we align with his word that we see it manifest. And, and, and I know a lot of times we want God to do it our way, but God's not going to do it your way. He's going to do it his way. Amen. Amen. We got uh, several comments here. Uh, I got some yeses and some amens and promises of God. <laughs> and uh, glad to have Aunt Rosa back with us tonight. Yes. She says, uh, God's will is the safest place to be. Aunt Rosa Kenny was asking for you the other night, praise yeah. God. Um, <laughs> and she, she also says that's good. Glad to have Sister Patricia Somerville. God bless you. Glad to have you uh, with us tonight, praise God. You all, the lines are open or put your comments in the chat. Uh, Tanya, as, as you were sharing, uh, one of the things I thought about um, was was the, the, the thought or the concept that um, much of much of our growth in God is based on perspective. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is um, as we grow in God, God doesn't always change our situation, no. but he will change our perspective on our situation. And so if you're hurting, um, God will oftentimes change your, your mindset from what is me to, to, you know, thank you for keeping me, mm -hmm. you know, or if you're struggling, you know, he'll, he'll change your, your mindset from, uh, you, you know, from from help me uh, to thank God for keeping me. And yeah. so, you know, it, it's it, it, our perspective changes on the situations that we're we're going through. You know, it, it, you know, oftentimes we uh, we we will get into uh, the habit of complaining about our circumstances uh, where, you know, a change of perspective or growth in God will allow us uh, to have just have a different mindset that, that allow even what we speak out of our mouth. You know, we talk about the power of life and death being in the tongue, uh, but but even what we speak out of our mouth will change as we grow in God. And I think sometimes we have to. Well, no, I don't think sometimes. I know um, we have to change the way that we look at things, and we have to change the way that we talk about stuff and the way that we speak about things. Because if we do not, then we'll find ourselves uh, uh, keeping our own selves in bondage from our own mindsets and our own uh, our own hard hearts and our own you know, our own words, the things that we say and the way that we speak things over our own lives will keep us in bondage. And so we have to begin to uh, allow our perspective to line up with the way that God sees things and not the way that we see things. And we understand from Scripture that uh, that uh, his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so 
uh, even as we're going through situations. And trust me, folk, when I say I understand that as human beings, we go through things. I don't ever want anybody to think that uh, that either of us at any point in time during the course of these episodes that we're discounting the facts, uh, the fact that we go through situations in life. I'm, I've known Tanya long enough and my wife's known her even longer to know that she's going, she's gone through some stuff in her life. And she's, and same with me, she knows me long enough to know um, that, that I've been through some stuff in my life. And I know many of you, all of us have been through stuff, but that's biblical. The Bible says, in this life, we are we are going to have trials and tribulations. So it's not about whether or not we're going to go through. It's about our perspective on what uh, on, on what we're going through and how we deal with it. Uh, Rosa says he will show us a different way to deal with situations in a way that glorifies him. And she says she's still learning. Uh, Rosa, you are not by yourself. We yeah. are learning every day. And I oftentimes say when we stop learning, we stop living. So mm -hmm. we have to continue to press towards the mark. That's Paul. Um, Paul writes, you know, we have to continue to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Folks, our lines are open. Uh, for those of you on YouTube or Facebook, uh, phone numbers on the screen, along with the access code. You just got to dial in and dial star six to unmute your line. Uh, but we, we welcome your comments. If you don't want to speak live, then, um, then throw your comment in the uh, in the chat line. We'll read it off for you. But we're glad to have uh, have you all with us tonight for another episode of Kingdom Center Conversations. Tonight, we're talking about keys to the kingdom, aligning your, your faith with your prayer. And uh, we're, we're glad to be talking about this topic tonight because I believe personally, and I, I, I speak for my co-host as well here, hopefully she doesn't mind that, um, but we believe that this is an, a, a, an important concept to understand as we work to grow in God. And I'm gonna say one more thing and I'm gonna pass this back to her. Um, but, but we have to remember that it, it, as, we, as we call ourselves Christians, if we're not growing in God, then how can we really be followers of Christ? And how do you follow somebody you're not going anywhere? And, and so we've got to we got to make sure that we understand that concept. Go ahead, Tanya. Uh, that was powerful, um, and, and I appreciate that. That was powerful um, because a leader a, a leader has to be going in a direction, and Christ is always moving forward. He's always forward motion, and so. If we're not following him, then the question is, who are we following? And are they leading us to the direction that we need to be going in? Um, you were talking and I, I kind of felt compelled to share a testimony uh, about some things that happened to me recently. I was having a moment because let's be honest, in the midst of this COVID-19 world that we're living in, a lot of us are at home or we're working or we're doing different things. And you know, sometimes you can get you can get stuck in your emotions. You can get stuck in places. And if you if you don't have the right people around you speaking life to you, you can stay stuck in those areas. And I had the I had one night when I was feeling kind of stuck and I called a, a dear friend um, who spoke life to me. And one of the things that she said that I, I feel compelled to share that um, and I think it may help some people. She told me, she said, your destiny and your promise is tied to the last word that God spoke over your life. And she said, and it's tied to your obedience to that word. She said, when you fail to be obedient in that word, then you get into death. She said, depression comes in, it sets itself in because you're not now being obedient to what God has spoken to you. She said, but the blessing is that the promise that God spoke over your life is tied not to your emotions, not to your, not to what someone has said over you. It's not tied to even what's going on around you, your surroundings, but it's tied to your blood. She said, and from your, it's, it's in your literal DNA. It's in the makeup of who you were from the foundation of the world. She said, and because the enemy can't mess with that, you can always get back up and move forward. And so I want to say this to someone, no matter what's going on around you and what's going in you, your destiny is tied to the blood and the blood still speaks and the blood still works. God, huh, the blood of Jesus Christ still works. And so as long as you know that you got the blood on your side and his blood is in you, because yeah, when you gave your life to Christ, there was literally a DNA change and you became a part and you, be, you were engrafted into his family. So now his blood is flowing through your very, your very veins. And so now there is a transfer of power. So now just get back to that place that God 
spoke to you, wherever that place was, there's a there's a state a status of obedience. And when you get there, you're gonna see a transformation. Because for me, that brought life to me and it encouraged me and it made me say, okay, Tanya, stop being disobedient where you last were and let's get moving where God said. So I just want to encourage you to say this. Don't stay stuck. You don't have to. There's healing in the word of God. There's deliverance in the word of God. And when we line ourselves up through and by prayer, coming back to God and saying, okay, yeah, I messed up. I missed the mark. Your word says that if I repent, that you are, you're faithful and just to forgive me. And it also says you cast my sins as far as the east is from the west to remember them no more. So I thank you, Lord. Now I can go and do what you called me to do. And I can walk according to your word without hindrance, without delay, without baggage. I can move forward in victory and be strategic in what it is that you called me to do. Amen. Praise God. You know what? I'm going to start taking notes when I talk to you. <laughs> I got some sermon material out of that right there. That's the offer. Now like, yeah, we're good to go. <laughs> but to God be the glory. Amen and amen. You know, as you were as you were sharing and, and you were talking about, you know, how how easily it is for um to for depression to set in. Uh, let me let me say this. You know, Paul Paul spoke and he said, or Paul wrote. And he said, uh, and I'm going to loosely paraphrase this, but he said, whatever things are true, whatever yes. things are lovely, whatever things are good, report, think on these yes. things. And so we have to learn to think on those things. We have to learn uh, to focus on those things. And then he came back in, or, or well, actually previously, he said, uh, in, um, and, and you know what, we, we're, we're not always sure that Paul wrote this, but I always like to say Paul wrote it. <laughs> but Hebrews 11 and 6, he said, um, he said, he's a rewarder of those who <laughs> diligently seek him. And I quote that one a lot. And the reason I quote that one a lot is because I think we, uh, well, first of all, as a reminder to myself to continue to diligently seek God in all that I do. And yes. I do think sometimes we have to, you know, as David did, sometimes we have to encourage ourselves. We have to remind yes. ourselves of what we need to be doing. But if we're diligently seeking him, mm -hmm. if we're diligently, if we're doing, if we, if we stop just singing, chasing after you, and we literally begin to chase after him. <laughs> you know, I know we sing these things, you know, we, we sing these things and we use them as cliches, but we got to really start putting these things into practice. Mm -hmm. Are we really chasing after God? Are we really diligently seeking him? Are we really, um, you know, seeking first his kingdom? Are we really trusting in him with all our heart and leaning not into our own understanding? Are we really understanding that all things work together for good as long as we love him and as long as we are the called according to his purpose? Are we are we reading these scriptures and applying these things yeah. or are we just reading them? You know, when we pray, are we honestly holding a conversation and do we mm -hmm. come out with an expectation yes. that's going to respond? Or are we just uh, are, are we just uh, are, are we just participating in vain repetition, as the Bible would say? Yeah. Which one are we doing? Because yeah. if we're just going through the motions, then how do we expect God to move? And we're not really coming to him in the right way and because and, and as you to go back to what you said earlier because a move of god is not a move uh based on our what what we want but it's, it's based on his plan and yes. so when he starts to move what he's moving is not himself but what he's moving is us and, and if we're going to be um if we're going to be stuck going back to, to your statement earlier if mm -hmm. we're going to be stuck in in where we are and we're not willing uh to to chase after him then we, you know, then then we're, we're just stuck. That's all that we are. Got a couple of comments here. Uh, Denzel Austin, praise God, bless you. But uh, a trustee at Kingdom Center, uh, he says, when we align ourselves with Christ, uh, we will never have to worry about needs and wants because uh, all of it is covered by His grace and His mercy. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. My wife chimed in, Tanya. She's your, your your buddy. She said the blood still works. Uh, we got a yes, Lord, from Rosa. Uh, Charlene, God bless you. Glad to see you, preacher. Yeah. Um, she said, we can sing a lie just like we can tell one. Uh, preach, preacher. That's from my Aunt Rosa. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is so true. We can sing a lie. We can pray a lie. Uh, you know, we can live a lie. We can do all of that. And mm -hmm. we have to make sure uh, that we are always lining ourselves up with the word of God and with the spirit of God. And we don't have to worry about contradiction because uh, one thing that we do know is that the word of God and the spirit of God are not going to contradict yourself, uh, right. contradict each other, because God is not a man that he should lie. 
Folks, we got about five minutes left in our show tonight. Uh, throw your comments in the chat, whether you're Facebook, YouTube, um, call in. Uh, we, we're going to shut the lines down in about a minute just to give us time uh, to get any comments in there uh, before uh, we run out of time for the show tonight. I know it's only a 30 minute show. We keep it that way because we want you to be hungry for the next one. We got a good one coming for the next one. We already planned it, y'all. So y'all be ready. But we tonight we're talking about keys to the kingdom, aligning our faith with our prayer. And it's important that we understand um, that we're not just praying, or we're not just repeating words. Um, I, I, I hate to even use this example because some of my folk that I grew up around are gonna know are gonna know what I'm talking about. But I gotta share this. I grew up uh, in, in you know in, in church that I grew up in. There was a gentleman who used to um, he used to pray. You know, on, on each Sunday he would pray. He was always he was one of our trustees, and he would pray at the end of the offering. And, and my cousin, um, <laughs> my cousin and I. Uh, used to do a lot of, we used to copy a lot of people when we were growing up. That was what we did in church. We know we used to, my roses here, my rose and my uncle, we used to, we used to copy them singing. We still do it sometimes when we get together. Uh, but, but we used to copy folk. And so, um, and, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not rebuking him in any way, but, but when he would get up to pray, uh, his prayer would be the same words every Sunday. So much so that when we grew up, as he was praying, we would repeat what he was praying with him. And it was a rather lengthy prayer. But he would repeat it every Sunday and he would have uh, my Rosa laughing. I know she's laughing because she knows exactly what I'm talking about. But he would repeat it every Sunday and we would uh, and we would literally be talking along with him as he would be praying because we knew what he was going to be saying. I'm not rebuking him in, in, in any way. You know, he's he's passed on uh, passed on since then. But what I'm saying is that it is very easy for us to get into the habit of doing that instead of actually holding an honest conversation with God. Yeah. And really, you know, we sing, have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our troubles. You know, he'll hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. But are we really having a talk or are we just reciting a poem? Are we just reciting, you know, words that we've memorized and, and calling them prayer? Um, we got about three minutes left, folks. We thank you all so much for being with us tonight. Tanya, I'm going to give you the floor here for any closing remarks you want to make. I just wanted to kind of uh, touch base really quickly um, when you said expectation. Expectation is key because if I'm talking to someone, number one, I have an expectation that when I finish speaking, that they're going to reply back to me and that I, that whatever I'm asking, if I'm making a request that I wouldn't go to them if I didn't believe that they had the answer or that they had the ability to give me what it is that I'm asking for. So there would be no need to go to God if you didn't believe that he was able to do what you're asking of him to do. So. Don't go to God and have a one sided conversation where you just say whatever it is you say. And then it's almost like picking up the phone, saying whatever you got to say and then hanging up and you don't expect him to respond. God wants you to listen, hear what he has to say, because God will speak, whether it's through his word. You know, God's going to speak. He's going to say something back to you and then have the expectation that whatever his will is for your life, whatever he says is what is needed in that moment, in that time. Don't be afraid to wait on the Lord. Don't be afraid to have that listening ear to hear what he has to say, because God wants to bless you. He wants to move in your behalf and he's not going to ever do anything to destroy you. If anything, he's going to make you. The one thing I always say is something that I love saying. There is nothing wasted in the kingdom. So even in the midst of the storm, God's going to. He, he Yes. Sometimes he calms the storm, but other times he calms his child. That's an old song. And so you got to realize that God is, he wants to do something in us. And as he changes us and transforms us, we become in his image and in his likeness. And we're going to see great and mighty things manifest through and by him. We are the kingdom. We are the kingdom. We are the kingdom. We're going to see God move. We're going to see God move. Amen. Amen. As folks used to say back in the day. That'll preach. <laughs> Praise God. I got a couple of comments here I want to squeeze in before we go. Uh, Denzel, God bless you. Glad to have you with us again. Uh, we also need to believe in what we pray for. Most people will just say prayers and not believe. When we have faith behind the prayer, to God be the glory, uh, things will move. God mm -hmm. bless you. Amen and amen. You are absolutely right. Got an amen from a sister like Glenda and my cousin Edna. God bless you. She says we have to believe God for what we ask for. Amen. That is amen and amen. And I share this as a closing statement. We're out of time tonight, but I share this as a closing statement with you all. Uh, we have said for years as a cliche 
that prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. And so I want to encourage all of us tonight. And I say all of us because I'm not only encouraging you, but I'm encouraging myself. I want to encourage us all tonight. Use your key. Let us all use our key. Prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the door. Use the key and believe that the key is going to work. Amen. And if we can go, then we can gain access to the room. Amen. And Amen. As, uh, as Jonathan Nelson would say, everything you need, whatever you need is in the room. Praise God. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Thank you all so much for being with us again tonight. We pray that you have enjoyed this episode of Kingdom Center Conversations. We look forward to sharing with you again next week. Same bat time, same bat station, Monday night, 7.30 to 8. We got a good one next week. Don't miss next week's show. We're already we're already ready in advance for next week. Don't miss next week's show. We're excited, and we're looking forward to sharing with you once again. God bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Yeah. Good night.